In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. How great, how, how wonderful it is when brothers and sisters live in unity. Brothers and sisters, it's always a great joy to celebrate the Chrism Mass together. I'd like to um, welcome members of the Presbyterate, both uh, priests who are uh, of the Diocese of Parramatta, those of uh, religious congregations, and also those vis visiting us, um, members of the diaconate community, and members of um, the consecrated life uh, um, dispersed throughout the diocese, and of course, uh, um, the people of God gathered this evening. It is a um, expression uh, par excellence of ecclesial communion. Um, and so um, we pray that uh, um, through this mass of chrism and, and our divine mandate to bring the good news to the poor, uh, we may be that embodiment of the compassionate God that we believe. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God's forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God has given has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim li liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord, a day of vengeance for our God to comfort all those who mourn and to give them for ashes a garland, for mourning robe, the oil of gladness, for despondency, praise. But you, you will be named priests of the Lord. They will call you ministers of our God. I reward them faithfully and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their race will be famous throughout the nations their descendants throughout the peoples. All who see them will admit that they are a race whom the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Grace and peace from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. He loves us and has washed away our sins with his blood and made us a line of kings, priests to serve his God and Father. To him and then be glorified and power forever and ever. Amen. It is he who is coming on the clouds. Everywhere will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the races of the earth will mourn over him. This is the truth 
Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty, the Word of the Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day as he usually did. He stood up to read and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant, and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus
my dear people and co-workers in the Lord's Vineyard. It is with great joy, hope and confidence that we have gathered here at our Mother Church to renew our commitment to be the wounded healers in the footsteps of our Lord. Despite many challenges facing us on all sides, we must not lose sight of our mission to embody the compassionate God for the world. As Pope Francis reminds us that what the church needs most today is to heal wounds, to warm hearts, and to offer closeness to those who suffer. Hence, this Christmas epitomizes who we are as the living body of Christ and his continued presence. We exist not primarily to impose our values on the world or to get our hands on the levers of temporal power as in the Christendom days, but to bind its wounds. We embody the wounded Lord and to minister to his wounds in the poor, the sick, the captive, the socially stigmatized, rejected, and marginalized. The church with our wounds and the Christian faith with our wounds are simply not compatible with the gospel. The word of God this evening speaks of a God who stands on the size of the wounded humanity. It is a God whose existence is not called into question by the world's suffering, but the God who feels that pain alongside us. As Jesus, the anointed one, in Jesus, the anointed one, God embraces, heals, restores, dignifies, and honors the downtrodden. In him, we are called to be an ecclesial community that is the sacrament of God's compassion and care for the least and the last. In the first reading, Isaiah reminds his people in exile that the promise of restoration was being fulfilled despite appearances to the contrary. He made known God's intent to rehabilitate the life of the dispossessed out of impoverishment, powerlessness, and despair. The anointed of God would bring honor to his dishonored people. A gallant instead of ashes, an oil of gladness instead of mourning. He would heal the brokenhearted, comfort the sorrowful, and free the captives. This messianic project, however, is not a repetition of the broken old system or a restoration of the Jewish monarchy with its golden temple in Jerusalem. For the era of political dominance, power and glory also happened to be, ironically, a time of deep social division and corruption. Rather, the Messiah would usher in a new kairos, a new era where Israel will live out the fundamentals, the basics of the covenant, and to shine out as a beacon for all the nations. And this is a sobering and pertinent lesson for the church today. We too are entering a new kairos, a privileged time to reveal not so much a dominant institution reminiscent of some bygone era. Rather, our task during this time of cleansing and purification is to become what we are meant to be, salt of the earth and light for the world. During the time of Roman persecution, the church often gathered in places like the catacombs, 
It was poor. It was fiercely persecuted. It was few in numbers. It had no wealth and influence. Yet, it was a powerhouse, a powerhouse of prayer, of love, and solidarity. Today, in the midst of our diminishment, we can learn to spread the fragrance of the gospel and to shine like the church of the catacombs. In the gospel, Jesus takes up the message of Isaiah and turns it into a kind of personal manifesto. The blind shall see again, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the dead raised, and the good news preached to the poor. These messianic deeds constitute the signs of God's reign. Indeed, wherever Jesus goes, people experience its inbreaking power through his person, his teaching, his actions. He fulfills the messianic prophecy of old and makes present the divine intent of redemption and reconciliation. The challenge for us today is to be a church on mission for those who long for healing, affirmation, justice, and love. We cannot be an inwards-looking group, but a missionary and prophetic community of disciples. Dear brothers and sisters, on this day of renewal of our commitment to serve, particularly as ordained ministers, let us respond generously to touch the places of pain in the world. Let us use the sacred oils consecrated at this Christmas Mass with touches of gentleness and healing wherever we encounter suffering and hopelessness. Our ministry as wounded healers can only be authentic when we immerse ourselves in the liminal places of pain, ambiguity, struggle, and despair. Indeed, our shared suffering with those who suffer is the precondition for effective preaching of the good news, for that was the way of Jesus. We are about to embark on the diocesan journey of synodality, which I believe will be the source of renewal for us moving forward. Pope Francis has said that this wholesome way of being church together, namely greater communion, greater participation, and greater mission, is what God expects of us in the third millennium. Synodality is therefore a platform, a platform for baptismal responsibility, agency, and creativity, so that all members of the church be protagonists and agents of evangelization. So I urge you to give the diocesan synods your wholehearted response every person, every parish, every school, every agency, every deanery and other entity. Let us plow the fields, as it were, plow the fields for the seeds of the Synodal Church to grow and bear fruit here in our local church. Let us pray that we may grow through chaos and uncertainty in order to be more aligned with God's purpose. May we become God's priestly and holy people, anointed to serve and with the one who is the Alpha and the Omega. May we learn to be once again the church that accompanies people as Christ did on the peripheries of life.
Let the presbyterate stand. Dear brothers and colleagues, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Amen. Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on that day of your priestly ordination? Amen. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and other liturgical rites and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the head, the shepherd, and not seeking any gain, but moved only by a zeal for souls? Amen. Are you, dearest brothers and sisters, God's faithful people, pray, pray for your priests that the Lord may Pour, for, pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. And pray for also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness and that in your midst, I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Christ to us. Christ to us. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. Let us stand. Consolation, who will to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son. Listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, 
your Holy Spirit, Paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. strength and protection of your people, who have made the oil you created a sign of strength. Graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it, so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ. They may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters. They may rejoice to be born anew and live in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil. May those who are signed with it outwardly be inwardly anointed and made worthy of divine redemption. O 
God's author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the Church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise as providers of this most rich oil, so that their fruits might serve for sacred reason. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch foreshadowing the gift to come. In the last days, all this has been clearly revealed when every offense is removed through the waters of baptism. The anointing with this oil makes our faces cheerful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron the priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added to this when your son Jesus Christ, our Lord, insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You send the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declare by the witness of the voice that followed that you were well pleased in him. Your only begotten Son and you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had, fo had foretold in song that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. Therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness, to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From his holy name, it has received the name Chrism, and with it you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you confirm the Chrism we ha you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those be to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May those who formed into the temple of your majesty by the holiness infused to this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth, be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal, priestly, and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garments of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacraments you have established. May this oil be chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit, and may it make them partakers of eternal life and sharers of heavenly glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sit.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O oh Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us the grace of salvation and newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design, were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ, not only adorns with the royal priesthood, the people he has made his own, but with the brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquets, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition with Je through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. 
Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, in, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, you may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of us for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and a chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones who were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant table, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, 
so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, especially Father Theo Aravoli, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not waging our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lords, you sanctify them, fill them with love, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, thus by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
stand. Let us pray. We beseech you, Almighty God, that those who renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. of the Mass, supper will be served in the Cathedral Hall. All are very welcome to attend. And thank you for your prayer for participation in this Chrism Mass, especially those who have come um, from uh, faraway places and uh, all those who have had a long working day. Uh, as you take um, the oils uh, back to your communities, uh, don't forget also, I think there are the, the Synod Pacts. Um, for your uh, communities as well. And uh, may I wish you all uh, a very prayerful and a very spiritually invigorating um, Holy Week. The Lord be with you. And with Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who may heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, for Mass is ended. Thanks.